Let's start with the Meniere's disease and in this section now we will talk mainly about the overview of the Meniere's disease, how it occurs, what is Meniere's disease and how it presents. It's very very uncomfortable condition for the patient so we should know how the patient feels and how we can manage the patient. So in this we will talk as I mentioned about basically what is the Meniere's disease, how it occurs and what's the pathology. Pathology is how this abnormality or problem occurs and how it can lead to different signs and symptoms of Meniere's disease. And then we will also talk about the different causative factors which can lead to Meniere's disease. So first, what is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease is a disorder in which there is, um, it mainly involves the inner ear. We already talked about the anatomy of the ear. We have external ear which ends at the eardrum. Then we have middle ear. Middle ear mainly consists of the ossicles which are the three bones of the ear which have we have incus, malleus and stapes. So that forms the middle ear. Then we have inner ear. Inner ear is uh, consists of uh, endolymphatic system. It's also known as the uh, endolymphatic system because it has a fluid known as endolymph. Two types of fluids are present in the ear. We have perilymph that is uh, um, mainly surrounding the uh, endolymphatic system. And then we have endolymph which is present in the inner ear, endolymphatic system, which constitute the cochlea. Then we have the vestibule in the inner ear. Two main structures are present in the vestibule. We have saccule and the utricle. Then we have semicircular canals, which are uh, three semicircular canals. We have horizontal because of the position of the semicircular canal, it's horizontal. And then we have superior canal and then on the back we have the posterior canal. So these are the structures present in the endolymphatic system or the inner ear which is filled with the fluid known as the endolymph. So what happens in the Meniere's disease, the fluid which is present in the endolymphatic system, it is increased that leads to distension of the uh, endolymphatic system. So disorder of the inner ear where the endolymphatic system is distended with endolymph. It becomes distended because endolymph is increased. Different factors leads to increased in the endolymph. We will talk about them later on. But very commonly different allergies, infections cause increased secretion and increased production that can cause Meniere's disease. So this is the inner ear or the endolymphatic system. This is the cochlea, snail shaped structure. Then the vestibule which have saccule and utricle. Saccule are, and utricle are known as the autolith. So very very important uh, structure for maintaining the balance. Balance is maintained. Then we have semicircular canal. Semi means half circles. So it's like a half of the circle. So horizontal canal. Then we have posterior and superior canal. The common symptoms associated with the uh, Meniere's disease, vertigo is very common. Vertigo is sensation of spinning. So patient feels like the world or environment is spinning around them. So vertigo is very, very common. Then the sensory neural hearing loss. We have two types of hearing loss mainly. 
one is conductive conductive is mainly due to any um, obstruction to the uh, transfer of the sound waves from the external to the inner ear and that is mainly due to some growths and wax is very common cause of conductive hearing loss but sensory neural hearing loss is mainly associated with the nerve injury and that is mainly associated with abnormalities of the inner ear because this is the inner ear from the inner ear the sound waves are transmitted through auditory nerve and then it is interpreted by the uh, auditory cortex. So sensory neural hearing loss is present in Meniere's disease, not conductive hearing loss. Then another is tinnitus. Patient has ringing sensation in the ear. They hear the ringing sound and this ringing sound can cause uh, sleep disturbances. Patients cannot sleep. They keep on changing different positions so they can feel better. So very, very common symptoms associated with uh, Meniere's disease. There is vertigo, sensory neural hearing loss, and then tinnitus. Oral fullness. Oral fullness, patient feel that they have a fullness of the ear and this is again because of increased uh, endolymphatic uh, or endolymph in the ear and that increased fluid cause feeling of fullness in the ear. So all these four are very, very common symptoms associated with Meniere's disease, which is the extension of endolymphatic system with increased endolymph. Pathology, as we already mentioned that it is increased in endolymph. When there is uh, increased in and, uh, endolymph, it can cause uh, pressure on the resinear membrane here and it is pushed uh, uh, into the scala vestibuli and this scala vestibuli this all causes these problems like vertigo tinnitus ringing uh, and the fullness of the ear and hearing loss so that's the main pathology that causes Meniere's disease if you see in this diagram this is the normal cochlear duct so this is normal cochlear duct. Cochlear duct has a resnier membrane. This is the cochlear duct uh, that carries the fluid. Uh, then if it is distended, this cochlear, distended cochlear duct causes the uh, pushing of the resnier membrane into the scala vestibuli. So this is the internal structure of the cochlear duct. That's the normal, that's the one with the pushing of the uh, Reisner's membrane into the scala vestibuli. There is distension of endolymphatic system and then this distension of endolymphatic system affects the cochlear duct, sacule, utricle and semicircular canals all are affected by increased in the endolymph. What are the different causes of uh, 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 Meniere's disease? We have different factors that can lead to increased production of endolymph and increased pressure and abnormality in the cochlear duct. One is um, defective absorption by endolymphatic sac. So if there is defective absorption, then it leads to increase in the endolymph and this defective absorption leads to increase endolymph pressure, ischemia of the sac and distension of membranous labyrinth. So all these can occur as a result of increased endolymph. Then we have vasomotor disturbance. 
sympathetic overactivity resulting in spasm of internal auditory artery and this responsible for deafness and vertigo. So vasomotor disturbance, the problem in sympathetic nervous system. We have two sympathetic and parasympathetic. So in disturbance in sympathetic nervous system leads to spasm of internal auditory artery. And this spasm of internal auditory artery is responsible for all the ischemias and uh, defective absorption also can lead to deafness and vertigo. Then allergies. Allergies is very, very common cause of uh, increased production of uh, endolim. And with allergies, we have uh, other symptoms also like uh, uh, sinusitis, uh, runny nose, uh, sore throat, and all these together affects the ears also. And there is fullness of the ear with the allergies. And if person know who, what they are allergic to, they should treat that. And even other drugs like histamine um, and other anti-allergics can be used for to treat this. Then sodium and water retention. Fluid retention leads to endolymphatic high drops. Sodium uh, overall can cause increase in the water retention. That's why patients who are hypertensive, they should have a limited uh, intake of sodium also because it leads to water and fluid retention and cause increase in the fluid volume that cause increase in the pressure. So the same cause uh, fluid retention is caused by sodium and water retention. Then another condition known as hypothyroidism, which is the condition in which thyroid levels are low. This can lead to Meniere's disease and increased production of endolymph. And this should be treated with uh, thyroxine to uh, treat this condition. Then another uh, disorders that can lead to Meniere's disease, we have autoimmune and viral etiologies in which we have some autoimmune disorders and viral infections can lead to Meniere's disease. And this should be diagnosed on the basis of different lab tests and clinical observations and should be treated accordingly. So Meniere's disease occurred as a result of all these different conditions and it is important that we should treat the underlying cause to get the permanent cure of the Meniere's disease. So knowing underlying cause is important so it should be treated appropriately. So that was all about the overview of Meniere's disease in which we talk about what is Meniere's disease, what are the signs and symptoms, and what are the causes of the Meniere's disease. Thank you for watching scardia.com.